Chapter 296 Magician He took two steps forward and passed the coffee table. Klein stretched his body and shook his wrist, but he found nothing unusual. He looked at the gas lamps outside the Oreo window, which illuminated the darkness and gloominess, and said to himself thoughtfully, My hands are more agile, and I'm more nimble. Even if I don't have beyonder powers, as long as I work hard enough, I can become a top magician. This was his first impression of his own transformation. And just like what was recorded in the Nighthawk records, if a potion provided a specific magical power, then the Beyonder would become aware of it after ingesting it. They would grasp the specific details as though the corresponding knowledge would be injected and imprinted into the mind through a mysterious method. Just now, my head nearly exploded. Klein smiled and shook his head carefully recalling what he had felt in the corresponding magical spells. It had to be said that Magician was indeed considered a powerful Sequence 7, with it possessing many miraculous abilities that could all be cast very quickly. Among them, there were three which Klein valued and liked the most. The most important one was Damage Transfer. As long as he didn't die instantly, as long as his hands could still move, he could transfer the vital wounds to unimportant areas like his arms turning fatal wounds into minor injuries. This was a very useful beyonder ability for life preservation in actual combat. The only problem is that at sequence 7, wounds can only be transferred around my body, and there's only one opportunity. Perhaps as my sequence is raised, the wounds can be transferred to other items or people. It really does feel like magic. Klein imagined the future. The second spell was Flaming Jump. Within a range of 30 meters, he could phase between a fire spark that he had left behind and the original flame. It was similar to teleportation, which seemed to have a uniqueness of gaining help from the spirit world. Well, it can be used to its fullest when performing magic. Klein mocked himself inwardly with great satisfaction. More importantly, as he digested the potion and raised the sequence, the range of flaming jump would increase significantly. The third type of Beyonder spell was the air bullets which Klein had seen the suited clown from the Secret Order use. The magician could produce air projectiles with power and speed comparable to that of the bullets fired from a custom revolver just by snapping his fingers or mimicking sounds. Furthermore, the effect would improve along with the digestion of the potion and the raising of his sequence. Klein suspected that at sequence 4 or 5, he could create his own cannonball. This way. I don't need to buy more revolvers and bullets anymore. No, I still need to buy one. There are many matters that don't need me to expose my beyonder powers. Any problem that can be solved with guns isn't a problem. Klein nodded indiscernibly and began to examine the other spells and spell-like abilities. The fourth type was paper figurine substitutes. At a critical moment, the magician could temporarily change the paper figurine into him while he swapped places. It was a relatively simple substitute spell that could not only block a fatal blow, but also weaken the damage from hexes. So this is the use of all the paper figurines that Marionettis Master Rosago had brought with him. He must feel regret because he was contaminated by the true creator and didn't have the chance to use a substitute at all. The biggest problem with this spell is the need to prepare the materials beforehand, which means that the paper figurines have to be cut in advance. In the early days of the fifth epoch, Beyonders who brought similar items would undoubtedly be regarded as a dark warlock. If it's discovered now, I'll most likely be suspected. Klein mulled over the uses and limitations of paper figurine substitutes. The fifth kind of spell-like ability was called flame controlling. As the name implied, one could manipulate flames within a range of 30 meters with a simple action. It could also be used to ignite certain items within this range. Once the potion has been completely digested, or when I advance in sequence, one could summon a swirling flame out of thin air. The sixth was illusion creation. By influencing the surrounding environment, one could create illusions with colors, sounds, and smells that were close to reality, allowing one to pass off the fake as the truth and deceive the enemy. This is a specialty of a magician. Klein chuckled and walked over to the Oreo window as he took in the night scene of the streets with great satisfaction. The seventh was a fake form of underwater breathing. 
The principle behind it was to create a thin, invisible air pipe which would allow the magician to breathe freely and seemingly turn into so-called murlocs. The problem was that the air pipe had a limited length. At his present stage, Klein could only maintain it at around 5 meters, which meant that if the water depth exceeded 5 meters, he could drown. Of course, the potion's digestion and sequence advancement would result in the growth of the air pipe. The eighth was a spell-like ability, bone softening. This helped the magician break free from handcuffs, ropes, and chests. It's also a specialty, Klein thought in a good mood. The ninth was the evolution of the clown's ability to turn paper into throwing knives, called drawing paper as weapons. Not only could it turn paper into sharp objects, but it could also temporarily turn into weapons such as bats or bricks, etc. These were the nine main spells, or spell-like abilities, of a magician. Although they weren't particularly strong in both the offensive and defensive aspect, nor were they particularly bizarre, they stood out for their variety. They allowed Klein's strength to instantly rise by more than one level, and his life preservation and means of escape became even better. Moreover, magicians had the ability to cast spells at high speeds. This was a sequence of beyonders who didn't need to chant or inject spirituality. With just a simple action, they could cast the corresponding spell or spell-like ability. In addition, the potion made Klein attain some tiny tricks, but they weren't very practical. I can barely be considered quite a good beyonder, Klein sighed silently. Just as he was about to go for a stroll and get another revolver and replenish his bullets at the Braveheart's bar, the gas lamps outside the Oriole window which tainted the Crimson Moon's moonlight suddenly turned darker and deeper. Klein looked up in surprise and saw that the dark clouds and mist had dispersed, clearly revealing the red moon which was a little more than a semicircle. Its outline rapidly turned into a full circle, and in just a few seconds, it had turned into a full moon that was as red as blood. It had only been two weeks since the last full moon. According to the normal calendar, according to astronomy, there were still about ten days left until the next full moon. This is the blood moon? Klein's lips moved slightly as he muttered to himself in relief. In this world, the changes to the room were both regular and irregular. Ordinarily, it was exactly the same experience Klein had in his previous life. However, there were always a few times every year when it would suddenly become round and dark red, just like blood. Such a situation had no logic to it. At times, it happened only once a year, and sometimes four or five times a year. Neither astronomers nor mystics could explain this phenomenon or come up with a pattern. Therefore, they could only ignore it for the time being as one of the puzzles. They joked that perhaps the goddess was in a bad mood and that a change in a woman's mood was undoubtedly irregular. Of course, not knowing the reason and not being able to understand the essence of the phenomenon didn't mean that there was no corresponding conclusion. In mysticism, people called this situation the blood moon believing that it would bring about the rise and eruption of negative emotions, and that it would strengthen the power of the underworld and the spirit world. Even if the dead were summoned, they might still be able to climb out of their graves. This is the second time this year, right? Klein stood by the oriel window, admiring the clear sky and the disc-like full moon which was red and glistening. He felt he was in a relatively good shape. In an apartment in Sherwood Borough, Forrest Wall, who had participated in a gathering that night, was unable to make it back home to the two-bedroom apartment in St. George Borough. She sat cross-legged on a sofa in the living room, chewing on a new type of bread which had meat and vegetables in it. She had let down her hair as she thought over the plot of her next novel. Suddenly, she frowned and threw away the food and pen in her hand. The moonlight outside the window grew stronger and redder, and the look on Forrest's face became more and more painful. Every full moon, she would hear those ravings that would drive her mad. Bam! She fell off the couch, her body writhing as she struggled. After a while, she pulled out a clump of her hair, but the pain did nothing to ease the explosive sensation in her head or to calm the urge to end her life with a knife. Here it comes again. Fours muttered in pain as her legs were stretched taut from the spasms of pain. She chanted the name of the god she believed in with great difficulty seeking redemption. Great god of steam and machinery, you are essential, the embodiment of... 
You are an artisan, a protector. You are the glory of technology. Glory. As she repeatedly chanted, Forza's suffering didn't abate, and instead, it grew more intense. Bam! She tumbled around violently, toppling the coffee table and sweeping the books on it to the ground. Unable to endure it any further, Forrest frantically used her nails to scratch the wooden leg of the coffee table, creating one deep scratch after another along with jarring screeching sounds. Bah! Her fingernails broke. Her hair was growing abnormally long. At that moment, she felt that she would lose control that very night and become a monster. She had already chanted the honorable names of several gods, but she had failed to receive any reprieve. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. As she writhed and rolled about, she suddenly saw a piece of paper with the words in ancient Hermes written on it. It was the mysterious incantation Shio had found in the history of the Lowen Kingdom's aristocracy. Her chanting of it had even attracted an existence suspected to be an evil spirit. Even if it's an evil spirit, as long as you can help me, I'm willing to accept. Such a thought flashed through Forza's turbid mind. She struggled to look over as she used all her strength to whisper. The fool that doesn't belong to this era. The mysterious ruler above the grey fog. The king of yellow and black who wields good luck. Save me. Save me.